Okay, to get this series started, I'm just going to show you how to install on Windows the four pieces of software we need. Um, I'll go through each one of them, what they're about, and show you the links, and then just quickly walk through how to install them on a fresh Windows install. So we're going to install four pieces of software to get the final kind of stack we need to get this data uh, displaying in Mapbox Studio. So obviously one of the first pieces we need is we need Mapbox Studio. We're also going to download a tool which is a kind of general GIS tool for Windows, uh, a free and open source piece of software called QGIS or Quantum GIS. QGIS um, we might use during the kind of tutorials just to be able to visualize some of the data uh, not in Mapbox uh, Studio but also it comes with a few really important tools uh, installed with it and they're probably the easiest way to install them in Windows and we're going to use a tool, a command line tool called OGR to OGR and we're going to use that later for getting the shapefile data we have into Postgres into the database. So we're going to use one of those tools later, but we might actually use QGIS itself at some point. Uh, then we're going to install uh, PostGIS and Postgres. So Postgres SQL is uh, a really famous and, and really uh, interesting open source database software. Um, so obviously a lot of people are familiar with, familiar with MySQL. Postgres uh, is a similar kind of database, has lots and lots of features, lots of enterprise features, and again is free and open source. But we specifically want to use it because it supports geospatial formats by using a plugin called PostGIS. So PostGIS is uh, for installing on top of Postgres. So what we're going to use all these tools for is to take shapefile data, so Esri shapefile data, to import it into Postgres and then to connect Postgres to Batbox Studio so that we can style uh, a large quantity of data and still keep it performant. So we're going to get started with Postgres SQL. If you go here to this URL at the top here, you can see uh, we're going to go and download the full installer for Windows, which includes uh, PG Admin, which is a kind of graphical tool. Uh, for being able to edit uh, data and we might need to see that, use that later but you'll see in a moment. Uh, so we're just going to download it from this link here and choose whichever flavour of Windows you've got. So obviously I want 64-bit on this current operating system. We're currently going to download the latest version 9.4.1 so we'll download that. And then we're going to go and get post GIS, which is what we install on top of Postgres. So once you've got Postgres installed, we'll install this. And you can see here we've got um, a page specifically for Windows again. And we're going to go and download uh, the latest Windows version. Uh, so you want Postgres 9.4. So try and install the version of PostGIS that matches the version of Postgres. So 9.4.1 we're downloading there. 9.4 there we're going to download. Uh, sometimes it can get a bit confusing, doesn't really matter which one you want. I would go for the EXE just so it'll run straight away and we want the 64-bit one, which is that one. Uh, you notice I'm not downloading them here because I've already downloaded them, but I want to show you where each one of them is. Uh, then we're going to go and download QGIS. So QGIS again has got a Windows installer where you want the 64-bit standalone Windows installer, which actually will start downloading, which I don't need right now. Uh, and then lastly we're going to go and get Mapbox Studio. So Mapbox Studio should work out what operating system you're on and so it's already detected I'm on Windows 64 and we just click there to download it. So once those are all downloaded you should end up with a folder wherever you want to put your downloads uh, with these four different installers in and we're going to start by installing Postgres. So up to you where you choose to install it. Obviously, if you've got a nice fast SSD, then uh, installing the data tools there is going to help. And it's just going to start installing some basic things it needs for the installer. Uh, typical Windows installer, follow it all the way through. Choose where you want to put your files. So you need to create a password for the default user. The default user here is called Postgres. Uh, and obviously if you're doing this on a proper enterprise server install you should create your own users and sensible passwords uh, we're just doing this for the tutorial and I'm only going to use it on my local machine so I'm just going to uh, create a simple account using the Postgres account um, by default Postgres listens on a particular port 5432 nice and easy to remember just leave it at the default unless you've got a reason to change it you might want to change your locale to be a particular country I'm just going to leave it on the default here and then click start to install
and there we are um, so stack builder is a, a kind of thing that sits on top of Postgres uh, and can do some additional installs and stuff and we just don't really want that so I'm just going to untick that and click finish so that's Postgres done now we're going to move on and install PostGIS Uh, so what's helpful, um, rather than have us having to run some SQL commands um, in a moment, is we're just actually going to ask the PostGIS installer to create a spatial database for us. If you don't do this, uh, then you need to go to the PostGIS uh, help documentation that will actually kind of tell you how to get started and how to uh, GIS enable a, a normal Postgres database. But I'll leave that on this tutorial. You can go here and, and read about how to do that. It just requires uh, running a few SQL commands and we don't need to do that here so I'm going to choose the kind of default location I want this in I'm going to give PostGIS my Postgres password that I just created so that it can uh, modify the database and I'm going to call my database tutorial and again PostGIS is just going to go away and install itself and set up that spatial database now it comes up with this warning about GDAL uh, GDAL is a utility used uh, in lots of open source uh, GIS tools and it's going to try and set up GDAL for me uh, and so just accept the defaults for this and then it will talk about some raster features of GDAL and just basically go through all these and say yes for now you don't need anything on that and you can see here it's creating my spatial database which will take a few seconds and then we'll be done so hit your Windows key look for PG admin which is Postgres admin we're going to open that up and I just want to show you uh, that it has created the database uh, this looks familiar in a kind of normal database uh, manager tool uh, but some of it's unique to Postgres it's going to ask me to log in uh, it's up to you whether you store the password obviously that's not as secure but for my uses here I don't mind about that and you'll find it's got two databases. It's got the Postgres database, uh, which a bit like in SQL Server, where it's got its master database, it holds all the rest of the database. And we've got our new database called Tutorial. And if you go into Schema and then Public, you'll find here's my table in, in my new uh, Tutorial database. So at the moment, it's got nothing other than this spatial reference. Uh, table which is something that PostGIS installs and stores its spatial information or parts of its spatial information uh, in its kind of spatial setup. So later on when we create tables by importing them you'll actually see each shapefile turn up as a table in here but this is uh, empty for now. So let's go and move on to the next install. So now we're going to install QGIS. As I said earlier, we're not likely to use QGIS that much and we don't need to use it for this tutorial, but it's a very handy tool to have installed um, generally when you're doing GIS work. It's very quick to open up shapefiles and to read in data from wherever you like and visualize it. So it might help us debug some of the issues later that we come across with Mapbox Studio, uh, but also it comes with some uh, really key tools. And the one we want to use is called OGR to OGR. That will let us load space uh, shapefile data into our PostGIS database. So just as before, choose where you want to install it. Don't need any of the sample data sets. And just let it install. Later on you'll see how we go and find the right directory to run OGR to OGR, but post uh, QGIS is the quickest way to get it set up on Windows. You can go and install it separately, but uh, it's a really handy tool to have anyway. So it's a quickest way to get that all up and running. Okay, that's QGIS installed. As you see there, it installed a lot of files. QGIS is a general purpose GIS tool that has a lot of functionality in it. You'll see it's actually installed a number of different uh, kind of sub tools onto my desktop here, uh, which is a pet hate of mine. I will just get rid of them all later probably. Um, but we're all set up for QGIS. Let me just quickly show you what QGIS looks like. So QGIS has a desktop kind of editor and just a viewer, so we're not going to use the viewer at all. But you can see it opens up here. And any of you who have been used to using something like um, MapInfo or um, ArcGIS, this is a, a similar kind of layout and feel to those kind of tools. Um, and there's all kinds of functionality, and we're going to use a very, very small amount if we use any of this at all later. Okay, the last install to do then is Mapbox Studio.
and just let that go away and install. Mapbox Studio uses uh, a platform called Node.js. It actually runs effectively as a website on your machine. Uh, it's a great way of Mapbox running the same tool across all the different platforms. Um, so it's a really, really powerful tool and feels like a desktop tool, but uh, cleverly behind the scenes, it's actually running a lot of JavaScript uh, to do a lot of the stuff we need. So that's Mapbox Studio installed. So we've now got all our four tools installed and we can actually start looking at getting the first step of the real work done, which is to load some data from a shapefile into Postgres.